album anniversary review um metal breakdown um i am scott allen and always with me chris myers and chris myers always who else is running this board not me i'll tell you that (laughs) barely running this podcast uh and today's episode we are doing pantera's reinventing the steel Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we will not be playing that song today, but um, as always, um, the point of this podcast is for you to go out and listen to the full album, Mm -hmm. because we can't play the full album. I mean, we could. We could, but that's spoiled. That's not fun. That's already on Spotify. Yeah. That's already on Spotify, so you can just go over there and click on that album. Mm -hmm. Or any other streaming service you use, whatever. Pretty much. Yeah. YouTube yeah. for free, yeah. Uh, so, oh God, well, where where do we even get started? Like, I feel like this is um, 
I'm surprised that we haven't done Pantera already. Well, we're picking us this. being from Texas. Yeah, I mean, and we us loving metal. You must love Pantera, right? So I mean, one this thing one's that comes especially up. special because it is the 20th anniversary. I know that's why we had so, to do it. So, I mean, March 21st, 20 years, baby. 2000 is when it came out. <clears throat> Feels like it would have been older. I was surprised that it said 2000 when I'm just like, whoa. But yeah. again, I'm like 13, you know, what are you, 12, 11? You know, it's like, I didn't yeah. listen to this until four or five years after it came out, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and then if you think about all the other, the contemporary stuff that was around at that time in 2000. Yeah. You know I what wasn't, I mean? You're like. There was, this was one thing that still, um, everyone was just like, oh, fucking Pantera, another album. It was talked about, there was music videos made, it was played on MTV. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. It's still, it, it wasn't like an album that just came out like uh, our prior episode, Gojira's first album. And, and now it wasn't uh, something that was played all over the place. I mean, I knew Cradle of Filth before that. You know what I mean? Like Cradle of Filth had videos on MTV2 constantly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think this is kind of like my staying up late and, you know, watching MTV2 because that's how old we are. Not old enough, you know what I mean, for yeah. MTV1. Um, but, uh, you know, late at night, they would do, like, just metal at, like, 1 o'clock Headbangers till 2. Headbangers Ball. And they would old do episodes, stuff like that. Yeah, or yeah. just when they brought back Headbangers Ball. Um, mm-hmm. I saw this music video for, you know, uh, Revolution Is My Name. And I really think that was, like, the first time I had experienced Pantera. I'm sure it was in the background everywhere I went. You know what I mean? But, again, I'm just slowly getting to metal. My first metal being new metal. That was like the start just because of Rob Zombie and Korn. And then um, it wasn't until later on, you know, Pantera, everyone in Texas, oh, you like metal? All the older, my dad's friends, oh, you're going to love Pantera. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a staple yeah. almost. For, it's for rock in general. It's like our band. It's our Metallica, if you will. It's Texas Metallica. Yeah. I mean, if you've grown up in Texas, you've probably right. heard Pantera or heard of them. And then on top of that, it's like it's got that sound, the groove of like that Texas groove or whatever. <laughs> How the, you know, the Texas twang. I mean, we're talking about reinventing the steel, but listen to like um, Great Southern Trend Kill. That's like a good example of like. Or their first major album. Or the first. Um, yeah, Cowboys, yeah, from, Cowboys Hell, from Hell. For sure. I mean, those early albums really kind of like like force that sound down your throat because it's brand new. Whereas like, you know, this kind of has more of a more modern, this album, given that it's in 2000, right. you know. It, um, sounds, it sounds different from their other albums. For it sure. does. And it even, you know, people will talk about it later, but like critics and stuff have even referenced how it sounds more kind of 80s, uh, like um, early metal kind of in a way where it's, it's not, you know, um, I would even say like the solos, uh, he kind of t- keeps it tame a little bit on this album. Well, whereas like, yeah, you know, not every song needs something crazy blistering. Whereas like Cowboys from Hell was insane. It's like he had something to show. Well, the song we just listened to was pretty fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I do know what you mean. But I was thinking the uh, the other side of it to where it sounds very modern and more like the style of music going on at this time in some way, shape, or form. It's more like the songs that they picked or the songs that they have on this album. It really, when I, when I see 2000 and then I listen to this album and I know other Pantera albums very well, I listen to this, I'm like, oh, it's, it sounds like this because of the times that they were in, but I didn't see the other factor of where they were how the mix went to make it sound very old and classic. And then those, mm-hmm. like you said, those solos, I wasn't even thinking of that side of it. I was thinking of the more how rounded and, and warm it kind of feels at time, other than like prior Pantera just being like a little harsh and, you know, like just rough metal. Yeah. 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 I think it, again, well also has to do with who's, kind of, who's assisting on the album. Um, you know, they had a, uh, well, producer wise, it was Dimebag, Vinny, and yeah. Sterling Wine, Winefield. Oh, there was another one. I just saw Vinny and um, uh, Dime, and then I'm like, of course, this is a band that knows exactly what sound they want, yeah. what they're going for. Um, and this Sterling Wine, uh, Winfield, sorry, Sterling Winfield, he uh, actually helped uh, 
them with this album. And then post Pantera, he helped with Damage Plan, uh, that debut album. And he also worked with Hell Yeah. So we kind of followed Pantera oh, okay. post Pantera, but this is kind of where, and I can, if you listen back, I mean, of course, listening back to it, you hear where, like you're saying, it does sound more round because they got this producer coming in. And then if you listen to like Damage Plan or Hell Yeah, which is more same modern. Same way, yeah. It does have that same kind of same feel. feel. It's huge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but not harsh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they, that will, of course, this guy lended to their sound post Pantera and even at the very tail end. But I think that's why this album does sound different. Yeah. They had this new guy come in and really just kind of inject this more modern sound into what, or, you know. Well, maybe we could do a little bit of a, a Google search right now of anyone helping out on prior albums. Was there any other producers that would come in and help in that process? Or was it always just Vinny? And motherfucking Dimebag until this album um, and kind of like trusting someone because that's what it takes for them to bring someone in to mess with yeah. our, you know, creation. Um, um, just curious. Great Southern Ken- Trend Kill had uh, Terry Date produce it. Um, okay. He was the only producer. It wasn't no Vinny. Terry Date also did Far Beyond Driven. And producer is such a, 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 a kind of a... He also did a vague term at times, right? Uh, yes, he also did Vulgar Display, and he also did Cowboys. So he literally Ooh. was responsible for the Pantera sound, you know, or you know what I mean. Yeah, in some way, was responsible for the sound up until wow. reinventing, which is where we get this new producer. Even the band takes hold. I think at this time too, the band, you know, Dime had his own personal studio at this point. They all kind of, pro- you know. This album famously recorded separately from Phil, so it's like it was done. This one? Yeah. Reinventing? Yeah, this was the- I know Drake Southern Train Kill was made that way, but I don't believe this album I thought was- this one was the one because they- It was the prior the end, Great got- Southern that he was like in Trent Reznor's studio doing heroin, <laughs> uh, recording his vocal parts. Uh, Phil Anselmo, is who I'm speaking of- uh, went to uh, because Trent Reznor's studio is in Louisiana and he went there and yeah. they sent him the tracks and he just because he was embarrassed by his drug use he said and then he almost died like uh right after finishing the album or right before or something like that but mm. almost overdosed oh, okay how the fuck is he still alive well um again I it, mean it just it's I it's, love it's, maybe that Sama, that's kind of where me. you get that yeah. pushing edge where maybe that's where Terry Date left you know, after that album, it gets I see yeah. gets a little rocky maybe the, for that one. So there, yeah, for the next several years, it's rocky. Ever since Great they put Southern, out, you they know, put out a live album before One Hundred One comes out. Bef- in between four years, yeah. four to five years, it took in between albums, yeah. and they were pumping out albums every like two years before yeah, then. Ninety six Southern Trend Kill, and then two thousand was yeah, really, four years. But then you get uh, One Hundred One Proof in ninety seven to kind of. Oh, that's great. Over. One of the best live albums one of, of all. Yeah, one of the best. Um, For a band that was fighting all the time, man, yeah. they, they jammed together quite well. But yeah, so again, it's you have three heads producing it instead of this one Terry Date. And I'm sure Pantera had some say in what's going on too, but when, you know. For sure, yeah. Sometimes uh, leave it in the hands of the professionals yeah. and then just worry about you being a, a, a guitar player and laying down your tracks well. And how they trust this guy going forward with, you know, yeah, damage, damage plan, plan volume, hell yeah. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, uh, I guess, a testament to the sound, and you, you can even hear it. Like, it's, yeah. go it, listen to the first. And this was one of those albums album, where yeah. it's like, oh, this, this might be, you know, considered the weakest album on their catalog. or their Maybe by, album, like, fans. No, not really. You know what I mean? I but would it, I would say Great Southern is mine. Really? Just because of that whole factor it being separately recorded. Uh, there's a bit of a feeling that's lost there. Plus the songs on it are just sometimes strange. And it feels like... Yeah. I, let me go back and listen to it again. But there are some slow songs. Hey, Tens are, is one of my favorite. Tens, that's literally, it's like 10, apostrophe yes. That's the name of the song. It's one of my favorite songs. That's a slow song. Yeah, Tens. I mean, Suicide Note Part 2. Uh, part 2 is oh, it's probably insane. why you're thinking. Yeah. You know, I mean, Warner, I Dragged one. the Waters. 
It's, it's, it's got some really killer songs on it. And then... I think overall as an album, it's weird to listen to from start to finish is what I found. Yeah, maybe that's... curious about the album itself. Because um, wasn't, I wasn't patient. With this album, I put it on, and before I knew it, it was over. And over, I was yeah. listening to it again. I was like... Did, well, it's did only 10, 10 songs. And then on it's top of that, some, some of their... True. But it is some... some I mean, it's two minute. 40 second song, a three minute song, another three minute, three minute song. You know what I mean? It's like the ones that are long is like, I'll make, uh, it makes them disappear, which is like six thirty. You know, it's like certain songs are very long. Uh, revolutions over five minutes. Outcast yeah. the shadows over five minutes. They're all pretty long. They just don't feel very long because I guess because I like them so much because I'm just like enamored with all the little pieces inside of course, there's like there's a, a, a your course, revolution a verse, has a, a lot course, of a verse, pieces, dude. Little pieces, yeah, all over the place. Where it's like little sections in between, where I'm just like madly in love with. When it comes to Pantera, they they fucking whip it, dude. They fucking well, it's just they they don't <laughs> this, stop. This fucking, revolution every is my song name. Just slaps on this album. I think it has that <laughs> crazy ending where it just gets heavier and heavier. I think. Yeah. So it's like, especially uh, what we were just listening to yesterday. Don't mean yeah. shit. That ending is fucking insane yeah i was like what how i would never be able to cover that song i'd be like i don't know what they were doing i don't know what he was doing yeah it's kind of um i um super big fan being a drummer and all of any paul um such an iconic drum sound like one thing um you know some people define themselves by their style or like their chops as being a drummer which vinnie paul has all that shit uh, but I think he really gets noticed more often than not for the way uh, his drum set sounds, the way his toms sound, mm-hmm. the way his kick sounds, especially is mm-hmm. it's very the snare too. It's own. got its own like it's an insane snare, dude. It's like at eight. It's like inch, dead, but it's, it's not. It's weird how it sounds it's, depth yeah. wise. Eight inches, dude, and just like thick fucking yeah. hoops on. Maybe it. that it's, it just sounds really like it's Vinnie Paul it's not size. Like, yeah, it's twenty-four not really, inch uh, bass drum. 14 by 14 rack tom, mm. 15 by 15, no, it's like 15 by 14 uh, second tom, and then an 18 by 18 floor tom. Mm. And that's it. And then two bass drums, obviously. Yeah. But 224s, man. Two big old bastards. And he's a D drum user, which is kind yeah, of like, D-drum. you know, most drummers are like, bear, whatever. But um, if D drum said, uh, shout out to D drums right now, if you want to give me anything, that I have to sponsor, I'll use it the whole time. <laughs> a cymbal stand's a cymbal stand, in my opinion, and any drum set can sound good. Let that be a lesson to all you up and coming drummers out there. Um, well, back to the the kind of start of us with this album. You said you got into it with uh, the music video for the this music video, yeah, because it was I, I just saw it and it was like, ooh, what the fuck is this? And it, it might have been one of those uh, things that. Watching old episodes of um, Beavis and Butthead as well uh, because you know they're fucking yeah. huge Pantera fans, and it's probably one of those things where it's weird that Pantera got elevated like other bands from Beavis and Butthead because they were the only ones that were going out of their way to play those type mm. of videos. Just like War, which was weird. War yeah. got a lot of popularity from. I remember the Pantera videos. I I saw the first thing like this album came to my vision because of the album cover, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then. Um, and then I didn't. I, the first Pantera thing I owned was the Greatest Hits, and then that had some songs from this, but also that kind of opened the door for more of the albums, kind of like how Greatest Hits and, do. And which but, is weird. Uh, this uh, album was sold with that. You would buy the double disc. Yes, of in this. Australia. Yeah, and it came with disc. the Greatest Hits, mm-hmm. which is something that most bands hate to do. And they do do like how Pantera did it is the best way, unofficial. Yeah, um, I mean, I think throw it's, it to them for free. It's there's you know greatest hits can be like this sour topic in discussions and stuff with music where yeah. you know some bands have I think say over what songs are going to be on the greatest hits, and then sometimes maybe it's the label that's picking the songs. You right? know what we don't do anymore? So, what greatest hit albums? What do you mean? Bands don't make that shit anymore. Well, I mean, it's very, why would you? It's really hot. Well, yeah, yeah, I will buy individual now, songs. There, there, I make my own greatest hits. How there are that? some you know, like that still come out every now and again, but it I is guess, like you know party theme dance mix. I can only think think of stuff. I mean, like, that. like I don't know. I could see maybe 
I don't know. I'm trying to think of a band, but maybe like Beastie Boys box set. I mean, that, again, in, it's in a, stuff that's, sense. like, kind of gets re-released yeah. and adds new stuff. So, like, their Megadeth will do something where it's, like, the studio albums or something. And then they'll include maybe the newest stuff or, you know, new box sets come out or greatest hits. But, like, yeah. kind of like a greatest hits compilation, like you're saying. Oh, and, and, you know. Yeah, and bring on that topic that there's three songs that are B-sides off this album that are on soundtracks for yeah. movies at the time, mm-hmm. which is, like, Heavy Metal 2000. And I think that Dracula movie... Was it Dracula yes. 2000 as well? I know it was Heavy Metal 2000, and I know it was two other movies of uh, fucking shitty 90s horror, early 2000s horror. Well, uh, Death Rattle action. was used in uh, that SpongeBob SquarePants episode. Fucking so cool, dude. Yeah. It's, it's just him running the entire episode, just running through Bikini Bottom, screaming as Pantera goes. Yeah. Greatest, greatest SpongeBob um, episode. They got, uh, we'll, we'll go into some more fun facts and stuff. Yeah, but, we just uh, saved it. Oh. Yeah. We'll, uh, Blowing maybe, our load what, in the beginning. Where are we at? We're maybe, we should, maybe we should get into another Yeah, we're gushing quick, yeah. too hard. So uh, what, what was our second song here? Um, I think we have to go with uh, Revolution Is My Name. All right. That's Follows a, up, yeah. That's a, uh, a hit or a the, single, as they would say. Probably the right? most popular song yeah. on this album. Yeah, I think this is the first one. This was on the greatest hits. This is what turned yeah. me. You know. Here we go. Uh, so it, like it was like Little Dimebag with a beard. Like he had... It's like little oh, kid dime bag, okay. but they has the facial okay. hair, yes. and they're all like little kids, I yeah. think. And I don't know. It's just I feel like the uh, the song and the the meaning behind it is just like it's kind of like their their song, like their Magnus Opus song, where it's 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 the song about Pantera. You know what I mean? And it's just like we've been into metal like our whole life. Like we love to have fun with it. I mean, that's what I always get from it. That in the music video, where I just I, I just feel like it's. It's a song about them and how much they love what they do mm. and uh, how much, you know, they just love playing heavy metal or just rock and roll, whatever you want to call it. It's just sometimes there's nothing else like it. You know what I mean? There's people that go through a midlife crisis at 40 and go out and go buy a drum set or a guitar and try to get with it just because it was something you wanted to do back then, didn't have time for or something. But, you know, it's it's everyone's dream. Everyone airs drums or taps their foot at a time or yeah. you dance or you sing. So it's kind of embedded in everyone um, to just wanting to, you know, play with a group of people or just be able to play a song all the way through and just be like, that was fucking awesome, right? Especially like, again, another brother band. Like, yeah. fucking so tight, dude. The tightest fucking band. Anytime you have a brother band, ah, oh, man, I wish my brother, Kevin, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> You were just stuck with the bass. We would be, we wouldn't be in any worries right now looking for bass players. But everyone has their own passions, and yeah, yeah, you know, it takes time. Your whole fucking life, pretty much, to become this good. They started off when they were kids, you know, like playing together uh, as a cover band, and they were like, "We cover Van Halen songs." I was like, "As a kid, you were just covering Van Halen." Like, it's kind of difficult for me right now to cover it, but. It, w- it definitely was different, right, Chris, when we were kids and we were, like, going to school and we could come home and pretty much practice every day if you had a house. Yeah. Your parents were still at work. You know what I mean? If you had, like, your own little studio out back, you could Something like perfect that, yeah. your sound and, like... And you do it all the time, mm-hmm. every day, especially when I lived out in the country in Texas, like, way out in the country. Um, that's how I started playing drums because there's nothing else to do around there. And mm-hmm. playing drums was the funnest thing and... And a, a, a kind of a hobby that just uh, takes a lot of time and effort, you know? Yeah. In multiple levels. And again, like by this album, this is their last album. And how many, I mean, how many albums are we? This is their ninth album. You know, the ninth? F- the first three were the original Pantera, you know what I mean? Oh, their self produced stuff? The. The Metal like, Magic, yes, man, exactly. they did that by themselves. I don't but, even count those. But that they are Pantera, they are counted in their catalog. <laughs> yes, so it's ever. like, but that's not. They had all those three albums to then perfect their sound for Cowboys from Hell. For sure, they did then, three full albums before even Cowboys. Exactly. You know? So they like, and then this album, it's like this again, magnum opus of sound. Where like, this is what is going to be Pantera slash Dime and Vinny sound going forward. Like yeah. they're gonna work with this guy and all that stuff. So it's like, and even Phil, you know, 
This is 29 years after the band first formed. It was formed in 1981. You know what I mean? Damn. It's like 29 years to carve out a sound. And get this. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you're saying, that tight. Years. Like, well, they were already really tight, but this is, again, that like yeah. to another level too. So, um, And like, I guess because not spoiled, but metal has gone so far in the 20 years. We've had so much come out and be oh, inspired by this and yeah. stuff like that. So it's like. Pantera is almost 50 years old. Yeah. At the time, this was, you know, reinventing the steel in the name. Like, they're reinventing their sound, their whole everything leading into the new era, the 2000s. Yeah. So I guess like, no one thought that we would end this. They would end that band, you know. Tensions are growing high. Exactly, yeah. I don't think anyone actually thought, but it just got to a point, I mm. guess, where... You know, can't come to agreements to get out there and play some shows. Yeah. Just hate, e hate each other so much. I think it had the, <laughs> so most, very much. the most hits of any album. And what? I think it had four what? singles. If you don't include the Black Sabbath cover, I guess not. But because the Hole in the Sky, which was released on the Japan edition, I think. Yeah. And, uh, but I think there there's other versions. Yeah, there was the... Uh, what are they called? Nativity of Black. Yeah. Yeah, one and two. That's what the albums are called if you want to look those up. Nativity in Black. The Sabbath covers. Black Sabbath covers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think almost 50, uh, maybe just 40 songs. But the coolest cover, yeah. Simple Tura, Pantera. Yeah. I think Slayer's like They got to get the best Ooh, to cover. Everyone. Yeah, to everyone. Cover Sabbath. Yeah. So. But that that ver that song was a, a single, I'll Cast a Shadow, Goddamn Electric, and Revolution. Um I can't believe Goddamn Electric. And I only knew that song, uh, I, I, I didn't even know it was on this album, to be honest, because again, that stupid greatest hits album coming with this, <laughs> and it just kind of like confusing the fuck out of everyone. That was also on the greatest hits album yeah. as well. So it's like, okay, you gave me this song twice. Yeah. Cool. But uh, yeah, so like at the time, you know, got all these awards because it was like a triumph and like the sound and all this stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, do you think any. Uh, Anything else was gut punching out there quite like this at this time? I mean, Deftones. Not gut punching yet. No, but I mean, that's, not. I get, the Revolution Is My Name was nominated for a Grammy uh, in 2001, but it lost to the Deftones. Oh, really? Yeah. What? So, I mean, <laughs> so the, oh, this was uh, the time of White Pony. Elite, that was the song. It was probably off of White Pony. Everyone always talks about that yeah. album. So, I mean, and then... Um, well, good. Death Tones, you know, amazing band as well, but Pantera, mm, I should have won it. Album was ranked number two in Guitar World's reader poll for the top 10 guitar albums of 2000. Um, it's got 2000 uh, Metal Edge's Reader Choice Award, Album of the Year, Album Cover of the Year. Um, you know, it... And then again, like all your all musics and like Rolling Stone, you know, pretty much it's kind of a little mixed. You know, your professional critics is where it gets. It's mixed. still like three and a half out of five. Yeah. All the way around. You get like all music giving it a three out of five. The Austin Chronicle gave it a two out of five. Wait, the Austin Chronicles <laughs> on there? Yeah. On that website right there? <laughs> Two out of five, Austin Chronicle. Yeah. Austin, a bunch of fucking sweater-wearing nerds. Blabbermouth gave fucking it eight out of ten. So, Scarf-wearing I mean, yeah. ass mother. So it, it was, Shout out to the Austin Chronicle. Please, uh, please keep all our shows yeah. and your promotions and stuff like that going. Yeah. Bangover Production loves you. So it was a mixed bag when it came to like critics, but when it comes to fans, pretty popular, you know. I mean, give it time. That's what we were saying. Again, sometimes it just takes time. Go back and listen to it now, 20 years later. What do you think? I always say that. Let these critics go back on that and be like, okay, you wrote this uh, review in 2000 about reinventing this deal. Now listening to it again, what would you write about it? And I'm sure their opinion would change dramatically because letting it sit for so long, that's, what, that's how you know something holds up. You know what I mean? 
you can have the top album of the year, but if next year no one remembers you or if 10 years down the line, you're still playing off the hits off that album because you can't break past it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you're going smaller and smaller and smaller crowds. Yeah. It doesn't... I think that this is where, like you're saying... Time will tell. It's going the opposite. They're playing huger and huger crowds. True, but you know. this album just being like the last one and maybe some mixed reviews, but uh, I think it holds up over time Yes, more than when it came out at the time. That being said, I, I was 13. <laughs> I don't know what other metal was really punching the wall. All I know is 2001 is when Toxicity and um, Iowa Slipknot come out and kind of changes the game there again, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, well, I do have a... A little I mean, competing here. with those two albums would have been hard for them. Um, so I think in, what, what is this, celebrating the 20th anniversary, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I thought there was something else that did come out. I can't remember. Oh, um, uh, Perfect Circle, their first album came out 20 years ago. Um, oh, yeah, Murder Dana. Yep, Murder Dana, and then... Um, um, yeah, love it. Music video was great. That was that was a hard hitting sound too. But nothing like metal extreme. Um, true. I mean, you had a uh, Caius uh, was twenty five, so five years before this, you had Caius. Um, so I mean, just mean like. And I know we had like Roots before this. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Kind of a staple, a uh, turning point. Uh, this uh, this album probably did. Um, Primus, Move a lot Tales of from the Punch Bowl was 25 before. So I'm just Dude, looking I've at seen it. this album more than any other album in someone's CD case, you know what I mean? When it comes to a metalhead. And the songs that people always talk about are a lot from this album. Again, um, they have so many great songs, so I can really go around the board. Yeah. I mean, I, um, here's a, a good example. This is one we may be covering in the future, but that White Zombie Astro Creep, um, 2000. That was, 20, oh, that, was 2000. that was 25 years ago. So um, that was even before this album. So that's kind of where metal's at. Yeah. And then, like, again, we had Roots in 96. And yeah. then another staple point was, like, 97 being Korn's uh, Follow the Leader. And then, oh, God damn it, Limp Bizkit. I and think then, that Perfect Circle's a good comparison. I think like it was Linkin Park. No. In, in, in metal, where it's, like, it's we're starting to transition out of it and get into, like, kind of where you see what a perfect circle is doing, these kind of newer bands that are yeah. like taking metal and maybe progressing it in a different way where it's like it's not getting as it's not getting heavier. It's getting more like musical in a way. Pantera was kind of like that last bastion of like heavy as heavy. Balls. Yeah. You know what I mean? That got such a sort of high critics or like critically acclaimed, got nominated for a Grammy for yeah. that's like don't know if that would happen now. No, probably not. But, see, but they always do the metal category now. I don't know if it was just back then. They well, did overall songs or it was it always won, the rock. Tool won last, I think they won the metal of one. Of course. So, but yeah. I just mean, you know, it's, again, it's like it, there's like, there's another example of how it's more musical. You know what I mean? Like, so I think this album may be more musical when it comes to Pantera's standards, maybe, but. I heard some cowbell in there. Yeah, they're mixing it up. They're experimenting. <laughs> well, also, what is it? Uh, you know, just the drums and vocals. They're doing some like different stuff, like with their dynamics. Yeah, where it's like they always push the envelope when it yeah. came to each album. It just felt like the everything just became insane at one album after That's, the was next. The whole it was motif just like was to beat the next one. Oh so. my god! Yeah. yeah, it's like where can you go from exactly. here? And who knows where they would have went if went. they stayed, and would they would have became more of a damage plan sounding band or who knows um yeah i mean they did a lot of you know they I did think, that rebel meets rebel where they yeah did, despite did all them, the bad so. blood just ending it here it's it's kind of a good call as well just to leave a good staple on things at times i don't know you know you don't i mean we never, we never would have got down and super joint i mean would you it become ne metallica though? Never like, got that's what i'm stuff. saying i mean they were I, already on the ballad points. You not, know what I mean? Not I mean, not ballad, but I but think... But they did do the ballads. And that's the song did, that you always but, fucking hear all the time is Cemetery Gates. I'm like, cool. That's our first album. I mean, you know, like this album didn't have one ballad. Yeah, thank God. But again, it's like this album had more of the radio hits. 
You know, that's I mean? true. Where it's like that's probably where it would have went. Maybe they would have just reinventing this. But. Or I mean, um, like Vulgar Display and Far Beyond Driven probably were just like, like those, <laughs> too heavy. Yeah, you're like, blowing people's speakers out, sitting in traffic. The they they got heavier, but more listenable in a sense where it's like, it, the the riffs aren't. Um, as chaotic as something Lightning like Cowboys fast. or something. We yeah. were talking about with the Gojira thing too and kind of just like becoming more mature and as time goes on, being a band for 30 years, what do you think is going to happen? Exactly. You know what I mean? Come I mean, on. They're, they're still fast, but they're, they're still not as aggressive. fast as yeah. 30 years ago. You Again, know what I'm saying? Like still aggressive, still have yeah. their chops. Don't, don't think that they fucking slowed no. down that much. You know what yeah. I mean? They just... They moved, and if you like those older albums, fine. If you like the newer stuff as well, cool. Yeah, that's how I always feel about uh, people when they're like, "Well, I like their older albums." I'm like, "Well, that's fine. It doesn't mean does it mean you don't like the band at all?" Because every time I talk about it, it's like just these albums. Fuck them after that. It's like, why fuck them? No, maybe you'll get into it when you get older. Yeah. You ever think of that? Well, I know, like, I can't remember who it was, but I thought there was somebody we knew that had never heard this album. It was like saving. Um, it. We did have a friend, uh, Kevin, I believe. Oh, that's who it was. Kevin. But he, I believe he was saying, again, it was great Southern Train Kill, that he oh. never listened to it and he was saving it. And that's I always think about that quote that he said, where it's like, sometimes you're just saving an album. I like, know, yeah, yeah. Going back, there was probably some gaps in my Black Sabbath album. I think there was nine with Ozzy, you know what <laughs> oh I mean? My God. So there's albums I'm probably not as familiar with as I am with, you know, something like... You may have heard a like, song, like a single, because it yeah, was off that album, but it's like... Exactly, and uh, going down tunnels where I just, like, got all of, like... Um, I couldn't even... Fuck, because I'm we're on Pantera right now, I can't even think about that, but just yeah. getting one of those uh, albums I've never heard of as well and listening to it all the way through. I mean, again, this what this podcast is about sitting down from start to finish, not skipping around, not because there's this one song I really like on this album and I only listen to it for that reason, from start to end. Yeah, we're I don't diving. Know if, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I've done that with all of Black Sabbath, you know what I mean? And then going back to this Pantera thing, where I was like, have I done this with all of Pantera? And I'm like, yes. I don't think I've gone <laughs> didn't, back and uh, dove, have enough albums, dove I don't into think. their first, like I've listened to the first three, but I don't think I've actually listened to them. Like I've like gone back and was like listen to a song on metal magic yeah. or like you know what i mean yeah whatever through the night or something like I've that i've never i don't think i've really listened to any of those first three albums so like i've listened to them for reference but just never like, for like and uh, change exactly, it right to fucking yeah. devoker display and be like, Wah. you know um i think probably a band that's no, like that for me that. might be like cannibal where it's like they have so many albums so I, many albums. I bet I could go back just, and find an album four. that I like. Re- <laughs> <laughs> I listen to four of them. The four newest what is albums. That? 30 Years of Torment, four albums. Yeah, <laughs> right. I <laughs> Dude, I haven't made it through the documentary. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe two hours, and I was like, I'm going to fucking crush this out. That was almost a year ago I said that, dude. I still got uh, two and a half hours left. One that, day. That, I mean, that's a good example where it's yeah. like, you know, go listen. There, there's probably, you know, how many albums they've had. And I'm sure I would really like one that I haven't heard. I just haven't had time. Or to sit down and listen to it all the way through. Exactly. Yeah. Instead, I put on Kill. And I'm it's like, something nope. special because <laughs> sometimes you find songs that you weren't expecting and you're like, well, this is now my exactly. new favorite Pantera. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or it's something that you forgot, like uh, or the first song we played where I was just like, I fucking forgot about this. And I'm like, whoo, it, it like immediately gets stuck in my head to where I'm going to be like doing the dishes later, just singing under yeah. my breath, you know? And um, wow, they do know how to write a song where it's just fucking so addicting. It's catchy, addicting. And then yeah. growing up, people were like, so many people would learn these Pantera songs and play it, especially being in Texas. And every time you go to the gig, if it's an older sound guy that plays in a bar in a smaller town, or he's like the sound guy in a, in a, in a smaller town. There's a lot of Pantera and in he's, the Gorehound He's like days his 50s, we were and he's like, you guys, fucking that was awesome, y'all. You guys like Pantera? It's like. Well, yeah, but you know, yeah, but that's all they want to talk to you about is just Pantera. It's like, yeah, fucking Pantera, dude. And it's like, heard uh, many of metal Texas bands, um, Texas metal bands, I mean, that's a better way of saying it, uh, going on tour to like Louisiana and South Carolina. And they know that they're a metal band from Texas. So they're in between songs, like when they're setting up, 
Pantera. Or I mean, when they're done, of, Pantera. One of the biggest you guys cover like bands. Pantera. <laughs> you like metal? You from Texas? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest metal bands in Texas is a Pantera tribute band. No, I, was, I don't feel like it. Feels like everyone knows it here. You know what I mean? It feels like everyone knows who Pantera is, and and the only reason you don't know who Pantera is because you just moved to Austin, guaranteed. Or no, not even. I mean, just or Texas. I was gonna say go just to Texas. Dallas, and then you probably- Dallas is even more so. But uh, it's fucking Pantera, man. <laughs> it's fucking always been awesome. It's there's nothing you can ever say bad about Pantera. They were just too cool, you know. And think about how they felt when. Um, like the bands around them that were younger bands that were starting to tour with Pantera, opening up for Pantera, got to hang out with Pantera and be like, you guys are my fucking like heroes. And then them feeling, you know, how they felt when like Rob Halford was like, you guys are awesome. He's like, did they, did he, he just told us awesome. Yeah. You know, it's like, so what a way to become like a metal God, you know, in their own rights as they worship their own metal gods at the same time. Yeah. It's what? if you're like in your 40s, I guess almost 50s now, and you were into metal, you fucking Pantera fan. Yeah. Um, and I mean, they also left that kind of staple with um, not only that, but I think also, you know, um, I was doing a little bit of YouTube uh, diving, mm-hmm. just rabbit holing, and you know, a video came up of like crazy on stage mo- deaths, you know, and. People were people performers that have actually died on stage while either oh, perfor- right. performing yeah. barefoot and accidentally stepping on electrical wire, which is Whoa. why you do not perform barefoot ever. Whoa! So do not. Ever There's a lot of bands out there that, that play do barefoot. That. Do not do that. <laughs> you There's need a pair of rubber somebody, shoes. Yeah, There's a will, lot of amperage. You will die. Um, wow. And then wow. all the way to people, you know, on late night TV performing and then just having like heart attacks on live TV. And what? So, when? Where? Who? I, I mean, this has happened throughout history just because of... I'm sure it has you know, to happen. People um, die all the time, right? Yeah. Why and then wouldn't it happen at this time? Die performing live. You know Dude, that's I mean? the like, way I want to go, buddy. How about but, you? <laughs> but, um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. But that's, it sounds pretty horrible, the stories I've heard of like people like kneeling over. Help and me! The crowd's like, cheering. One story... <laughs> are you guitar, cheering? I mean, I'm this, dying. This is a little off topic, but like one story, like guitar player kneeling over on his amp and then during another person's solo and the whole band thought that that person was doing like a bow down sort of like kind of homage thing. Like you're not worthy. I'm not worthy. Yeah. But in reality he's having a heart attack. And they're like just playing. And everyone's he's still like, playing. I think he and wants me to go into the drum solo. Yeah. <laughs> Stop so, you playing. Know what? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if it's quite the best. Oh my God. <laughs> but... <laughs> Again, I would um, accept my fate. I'd be like, this is how I go. Uh, to bring it up, this is just another stage tragic, dive right then. Tragic example of um, why I think they're very popular, not popular, but just well known is he. That crazy fucking. He died in yeah. the most craziest way. Or dime bag, oh we're talking about. And the whole band kind of just. This was during Damage Plan, of course, but again, it you'll never get a parent hair reunion yeah. or even another. Chance, like a chance of anything like that because of this and how like that big that was a staple. Now because of that, there's like rules at venues, stuff like that. I remember Man, after the that shake shit down, happened, dude. The shakedown that dude, happened afterwards. It's still pretty. I mean, because I mean, of it, it a yeah. lot had happened before. No, like no bracelets, no crazy belts. You yeah, know what I mean? Like it, no spike anything. Fucking. A lot of people chain make wallets. Complain, I don't fucking think so. Yeah, where it's like your oh, boots are too crazy. Yeah, like, I don't think so. But it was because of that incident where kind of the live music atmosphere changed where it's like people aren't allowed to come on stage. People aren't allowed to do this. You stay where you're supposed to stay. And every time that happens, something horribly wrong happens. I saw that top 10 of people <laughs> like, got on stage. Tool and, uh, the, and Maynard like puts them in a headlock. Rides them, he just <laughs> yeah. rides them for 10 minutes, finishes the song. Yeah. The guy could have sued Maynard, but I don't know, man. But see, that's but that's where it's like. And then uh, what happened to of, fucking Lame of God? You know what exactly. I mean? So there was. Because it never of works this. out. It never works out when you get up on stage. Exactly. It's not your show. You're not there to be a part of the show. Yes. You're there to witness the show. Yeah. Be a witness. So you you can see why like this, along with the you know the album and the band in general, just being so iconic in music and also in live music because of their sound, you know. But also they kind of like. 
put this everyone uh, heard that traumatic yeah. effect, this ripple effect of what happened during their show affected music for for history and live music just because you know security will always be top because they don't want to have another person get on stage and with a gun just murder start every, yeah. shooting people you know dude. I mean? that's insane luckily there was a, they would shut down shows like kind of like where we're at right now with the whole yeah. you know you have pretty good security at like big shows now you know what i mean you go to an emo show or something like that there's usually some guys around they might not have guns sometimes but, it's overload but that's the amount of security exactly because uh ever since then there's been a lot of like uh just real broy fucking security guards just taking advantage mm. or being a meathead and fucking attacking one of the but fucking people. Not not there to do your job is to keep these people safe. You're actually causing harm to them, which is ridiculous. Like wands, you know what I mean? That's now like a staple. You go to a bigger concert or even something at Emos, they have these pop up, you know, um, electronic or whatever uh, scanners you walk through. You know, metal detectors, these pop up ones that you walk through. That's insane. At these local shows. I haven't gone to a show in so long. Look and then, I mean, even, uh, I mean, local ones, like smaller ones, of course, there's like, it's the bounce, the door guy. That's <laughs> you bet. Uh, everything out your pockets, <laughs> yeah. hold it above your head, fucking put them in this bucket. It's going to yeah. go through a scanner. Yeah. Like you it's go like, to- uh, you're just, all you're worried about is them not finding that joint. Yeah. In your fucking I, sock, dude. I think at this, it's Please like don't look me my sock. Thirty dollars. I think at that point, if you're paying What's thir- this? thirty or you're more dollars cop. for a show, you're getting security checked at some point. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I've had a lot of like security guards being like, I, I was like, uh, that's my, that's that's just weed, and they're like, that's ah, fine as long as it's not a weapon. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I'm again. So long story short, it's just the or long points short, just you know. The album had a huge impact, but then the members also post, you know, we're not talking about Damage Plan right now, but yeah, after this album, album, you do too. get Damage Plan, and then that sadly is the end of, you know, the story. But uh, that's post, post this album, yeah. you know, that's the story. That's And because there was no more pain terror was his reasoning. That's, I, that's such a bullshit reason. Well, like, there's, why would you there's a lot of conspiracy because as to what break, his reason yeah, is. They, so it's like it's because the brothers are the ones that does like, he, they does went on hiatus, blame, and then yeah. two years later, saying that the band will never come back together, we're done. So, and then someone like being that much of a fan of Pantera, well, it's, like that's I think a, he, that, he that, was that really like, sold it, don't yeah. you think? When you kill the guy, that they would never have a reunion show. Fine, you don't want to ever play in Pantera again. You'll never play nothing. It's like. Well, that, that's bullshit. Like, yeah. That guy was is sick, mentally yeah, sick, sick, and mentally he wanted so. to do something that he was probably known for forever. Exactly. But you know what I yeah. remember or don't remember? I should say that guy's fucking name. Exactly. Nobody yeah, knows. Fuck him. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. So forgotten um, in history is the um, biggest asshole that's ever fucking. It's crazy. There's footage of that event. Like I've seen. You know, oh my see god! The behind so the music times. of Pantera. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where the story ends. Fuck but it. it's um, always in tears, man. Um, Don't get me started, man. Right yeah, oh, but I mean, t- just the reason why again I'm bringing it up is because we're trying to touch on the whole story of the album and the band, and that's kind of where things it. things kind of left it's, off it's after that. So it. you know, this is the last thing, the last Pantera album we get. We do get and it fucking um, slaps, dude. The best of, like you said, which kind of came out. It says it came out in t- 2003. Whatever, so, but you know that again. I think that was where they just kind of. No one notices it, when the greatest hits came yeah. out. Who the fuck cares? And then they also <laughs> put out um, their live at Dynamo recently. I think or I live think at I've something seen like that. that. I need to check that out. There's like a new honest. live album that's come out because 101 but, is probably might be number one greatest live album of all mm-hmm. time. Uh, second to that, I would say Motorhead's live album that came out extremely well. And then I would put Nail Bombs live. That one's pretty good. Um, but I'm sure you could correct me on a couple of those. That There might be some live shit that's There's a little bit better. There's some good live stuff. I mean, Cannibal Corpse. A lot of no. people put that uh, <laughs> Slayer Met- Metallica really s and because it's a live album and it's them with an orchestra, so it's like fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, dude. That's like, I remember a lot of people Maybe were like, that. I hate Metallica, but you have the s and album in your... I don't really <laughs> like most live things. When Pan- Pandora plays a fucking, I almost said Pantera. When Pandora plays a um, like an algorithm of metal or whatever, mm-hmm. and they throw in a live Judas Priest song or a live, 
Iron Maiden's song. It's uh, always, yeah. Why not just play the song off the album? Why, like, because you hear a crowd. You know what I mean? You no, know, I think it's Ozzy just, live. It's fucking weird. I remember those were fucking killer. Oh, Even though, yeah. Like, actually, yeah. That tribute CD. Th- that's what I was going to say. The Randy Rhodes tribute. He's holding Ooh, up Little Baby Rhodes. Yeah. Little Baby Rhodes. Like all live stuff. That is a sick That album. is... Oh man, he sounds perfect. He live. Sounds so uh, perfect. Pantera is another perfect yeah. sounding live yeah. band. Where, so before we get into the next song, yeah. again, when I was talking about those sound guys that are like fifty that just want to ramble on metal with you, and it's mainly about Pantera. I don't know if this is true, but they, you know, kind of being broke or just being in a, a young band. I couldn't afford equipment back then, especially to change a drum head. But it kind of seems like a lot of that Vinnie Paul sound, before I forget, I just wanted to say yeah. this, uh, came from just having worn out equipment. If you've ever seen his signature stick, there's no tip. There's no taper. Yeah, It's just a solid rod. And then the, the fucking, the toms always sound like so punchy and so dead. It probably comes from playing on old heads for so long. You get that type of sound. And... Um, Someone, and this was the craziest thing. Someone said uh, he would put like giant washers where you would have the, uh, the beater on the kick pedal on the bass drum head. And that's how he got that snap before he was mm. able to get something like triggers because definitely uh, his sound is a triggered bass drum set sound. It's a lot of snap to it, you know? Yeah. Got a lot of quick, quick cutaways. Um, so that was interesting to just think of like having. Um, like just a piece of metal there making your own snap sounds, you know, doing this yourself before you get that. Um, that's why I think the Vinnie Paul sound came from his drum set sound was just by using old equipment. Like when you break a drumstick, you turn it around and use the other end. The, the fat Back end, in the yeah. day when we were playing at the house, I didn't have a car to go get some and Amazon wasn't a fucking thing. All right. So that's where we were, you know, yeah. back in the day. You were taping up bass drum heads and stuff like that as well when you fucking kicked Mess through them, them by yeah. asking, how many amplifiers did we blow up back in the day? A lot, let me tell you Tape that. that up. Mm. Ooh. All right, so um, before we keep on gushing and turn this into a three-hour episode, <laughs> and we'll just go into other Pantera stuff. Yeah. Um, what's our next song? Well, I want to go with We'll Grind That X for a long time because that's one of my favorite hey man, songs. I, I would rather you pick the songs because it, it's, it's I can't do it. All right, it's too all much right. responsibility and the gonna, songs are too good. <laughs> We're going to go with that one. That's not a, a single, but it should be. I've like, you know, you've seen it played live or whatever and you hear it and it's just... You're just like, this is my favorite song on good, the album, like an, but no I mean, one else realizes It's like a it. shredding song, you know, it's a guitar song, so... We'll grind that axe. So oh uh, no, oh, I, I get it now. Uh, yeah, I get it. I, All right, let's let's do it. Now, 
So that's one of my favorite songs because because of how it starts to like that ending breaks down. I don't know. It's just really catchy. It's, it's got a lot of like gri- ru- uh, riffs with grooves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just shake my head. Yeah. Not, yeah. I, I can't hear nothing else. Uh, I have a ringing in my ear oh after my that God. song. Um, you know, someone came into the bar like uh, before, obviously, uh, before the whole quarantine thing. Um, came in and said uh, they wanted Jack and Coke. And... You know, immediately, you were like, oh, oh black tooth grin, you know? And they were like, no, we don't call it that. It's not a Jack and Coke. It's like, how dare you disrespect Pantera in any bar in Texas? I want you huh. out, out of this state. <laughs> I want you gone by the morning. Or I'll see you at sundown with pistols. <laughs> uh, dude, again, when I wear, like, my Pantera shirt out, oh, my God. I just get fucking Bombarded. stopped. And it's a concert shirt, too. I've never uh, seen Pantera live. <laughs> yeah, that's the so other thing. So you have it's to like, explain yourself. I've seen a lot How of video. Get that shirt? Because I collect metal shirts. I'm a metalhead. No. I've seen a lot of video of them live. And not only them, but just like Dime doing like clinics and stuff like that. I mean, they sound insane at live. Like, it, I can't even imagine what it would be like there. But to have like that reproduction done they sound really good so it's like yeah you know yeah i just i remember listening to like or seeing that like uh what is it monsters of rock or something like that i think (laughs) monsters rock and it's like the cowboys (laughs) from hell yeah but it's like the cowboys from hell and they're like the most the hugest audience one of the biggest audience i've ever seen it's like him playing with like no shirt right always yeah and like yeah the early days with the long phil i don't think ever wore shoes on stage he better have. <laughs> I heard he would also drink a whole bottle of wild turkey before he played because he had a bad back. <laughs> I'm sure that was the reason for it. Either way, that was uh, that just the their live sound dude, got playing, to a yeah, point, and the then he, stadium, they, the stadium sound, dude. They, yeah, arena. They got to is, this the arena point. sound because that with the monsters of rock thing was like cowboys early days, you know, playing domination and shit, shredding it, and then by the time they get to here, dimes a little bigger. You know, yeah. he's got he's got more endorsements now, so he's like got his own gear. Oh, I thought you meant like you know fatter. I mean? No, he is bigger. <laughs> like yeah, physically and as a, a lot star. Of beer. Yeah, I don't think whiskey has that. I think low Vinny. Of I mean, they kind of all fill, of course. Got a little. He's always a little bit big. No, oh, I, I mean, mean that big. that early of, days, he was. He just always seems like a big guy with that facial hair and the hat. You know, how do you play in a hat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't even play with a shirt on. You, you, get you can barely play with swampy. anything. I, I heard it, man. Give me a quick dry shirt, you know, like those little speedo pants. Give me one of those shirts, but with like Pantera logo on it, right? Like a Pantera quick dry shirt. I wear it every fucking show, brother. Every show. But um, a regular shirt? No, no. It's all swampy. Yeah, I mean, it sticks to you. You don't like. You don't want to feel that when you're on stage. Come Rex on. and Vinny. I think Vinny would wear like a uh, always sleeveless sleeveless shirt. Dude, metal. And then like metal tennis shoes ensemble. and then like athletic shorts. Yeah. Fucking jersey. And a fucking bandana. <laughs> or a fucking your favorite yeah, your favorite football jersey, favorite hockey jersey, favorite yeah. basketball jersey. It's um, kind of a common thing when it comes to metal. Huge sports yeah. fans all the time. Do you, do we know who's the the famous man on the cover of the Yeah, uh, it's one of their friends, uh or I think, uh, but they were at a party at Phil's house in Louisiana and he had a bonfire. And one of the guys grabbed a bottle of Jack Daniels and jumped over the bonfire. And um, this photographer, Scott, Scott something, Scott Herdenberg, Hurt, Herdeman? <laughs> I'm just going to mutter the last name. Oh Scott. my God. I saw Scott, so I remember that. But he, my caught, he caught it or something? Yeah, he got the picture. And that's what it is. Just some random crazy dude. It's not like one of them. But all their album covers are kind of like that. Who was the guy getting punched on the cover? Oh, of like vulgar display, it was like. Uh, I mean, they have, we, they've we, had like very yeah. iconic covers. That's the one thing. Again, we'll go. I used like, to know this fun fact though, because like, everyone would talk about the album covers, like you know. And then back then, the internet not being that big yet, um, everyone would have like this uh, mythos story about it, you know. Or you always get like some crazy shit that one of your one of the older 
a kid's told you in school and you're like, just fucking thought that was true forever, you know? And then you're like, no, you're a dumbass. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> this older kid told me so. I don't know. Yeah. Sean Cross, that's the guy in the photo getting hit, but he never really got hit. No, yeah, it was like we, I think we talked about this or we just talked about this in our everyday lives because this is what we do in real life as well, just talk about these fun facts about metal and music in general. The man on the cover was paid $10 a punch and was hit in the face 31 times. However, that man was never actually hit, and that was Sean Croft. So, again, some rock and roll lore, dude, trying to build a mythos. It, it sounds about right. We watched that, uh, I mean, that's, those Pantera it's, tapes, you know what I mean? Where magic just, like, and metal they always had a video are the camera. same. It's yeah. like, but Pantera just, especially always had a video cam going backstage, they, in the I, hotel room. I have room. those videos. I know. There's so yeah. many of them, dude, yeah. and they're awesome. Yeah. You know, they, they, And they the always seem videos, like they're having a great time. Dime Vision. Yeah. It was just always rock and just roll party with party them, and fireworks, yeah. bonfires, beer, throwing TVs out windows, shit just like that, dude. Women, fun. naked, yeah. They would literally all film the booze skits. in the they world. Do, oh like, yeah, the skit things. Yeah. Oh man, I remember um, one video. It's like the guy from um, Drowning Pool, uh, the lead singer that passed away uh, in 2001, I believe, and uh, he was like, "Oh brother, you got to have a drink with me." And this guy's like dying from a like a heart complication and probably some kidney things and he was like you gotta drink with me brother and the guy's like I, it just hurts and he's like you gotta have one more drink with me and he's like this guy's dying but like he's like you gotta because you know i fucking i love that drowning pool album and i'm sure they did too when they heard it and i i know drowning pool was on tour yeah, with that, them yeah the only, the I, one I believe drowning might have been around Center. the time god yeah. that's such a good album and yeah that, dude that again, i really think so i think that was what i'm gonna look at the year but i think they 2000 I think that's kind yep. of what I like. That's where metal's going. Where it's like it's, this, like yeah, that and like the other side was like Linkin Park and POD, which like just fucking kill yeah, me disturbed. Now. You have bands Papa like that. Roach yeah, Papa is Roach. on the other side of it, yeah. but they're on the uh, the flip side. We still have like the aggressive metal, well, and maybe some of the, have Deftones, the elders, you have these, like yeah. screaming. But then even Deftones is kind of getting, you know. I mean, yeah, Deftones define their their own sound later on yeah. down the line, where they just. Death tones sound like death tones. Yeah. Pantera sounds like Pantera. You know, it was yeah. like those bands on that side. Of, well, that's why it's like. No one remembers a Papa Roach. Pantera Fuck really that. couldn't go anymore where, past where it Sorry, was. Papa Roach. Because of like, again, where metal is going. So what are they going to do? Get a sing, tell Phil to sing like the dude from Drowning Pool. It's like, no, Phil's going to sing like Phil. Like a so fucking demon. If another Pantera album came out, it would be this again, maybe a little, you know, it would actually sound the same because they I, would I be think, working with the same guy. I you think know they would have. I think they would have went one step harder and, and just got more aggressive with it yeah. because that's kind of where their headspace always was. You know, what I mean, like, well, see, that's talking about like uh, when Rob Halford did like uh, fight, you know, and, and then them falling in love with that album, just yeah. being like fucking love. Well, see, heavy, like back to the heavy, like back to the insane heavy. Rob Halford went to like a thrash metal album. You know, it's like fuck yes. So That's they were obsessed with heavy music. True. But I think also, like, this album, again, if they would have did Pantera, it would have been maybe that. It would have gone into this heavier, thrashy thing. I think thing. they would have just went crazier. But in the history has shown that because the band broke up, they did get Damage Plan going, and that was a turn in this other direction of what 2000s metal, what we're talking about, the perfect yeah. circles, the... Drowning pools, you know what I mean? Like that where type it's like of metal core, more singing you metal, you metal know? Core. Yeah, because Damage Plan went in that direction, and they still yeah. were heavy as fuck. And then uh, Hell Yeah, after and then Damage Hell Yeah Plan. went even more in that direction. Uh, so oh. it's like where they got a complete, you know, they're not making a thrash song. Uh, there is no domination with Hell Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You kind of, you didn't really have that sort of feel with Damage Plan. But because Dime was there, you definitely had like the reinventing the steel feel. Yeah. You know, those wrists were still fucking heavy. And shout out to fucking Phil, dude. What a well rounded singer. What a what a monstrous singer to just go to the point where he's blowing his fucking vocals out, it feels like constantly. And just him and then going and doing like a ballad, because he has such that that natural twingy type of voice and a heavy if never if 
if any listener has not heard Phil on Sumbo talk, oh my god, yeah, so <laughs> deep. It's like, hey, hey brother. brother. Yeah, it's like Hulk Hogan brother? talking or something. How you been? Yeah, it is downright deep, dude. Yeah. So, uh, but he and he's, he's, he has so many different voices to get those highs I love that he Phil, got. It was just like, like yeah. and yes, but let me just say, like, I really do think that was pretty shitty. Pretty shitty. I'm going to say it like that. Pretty shit. Um, <laughs> that, you know, Vinny didn't even let uh, Phil come to Dime's funeral. funeral. Like, let bygones be bygones. Like, put that shit in the past. Whatever happened. It, it couldn't be that. It can't be that bad, right? Yeah. Did he, did he kill your mother, yours and Dime's mom? Did Phil go do that? What did Phil do that was so horrible? You know, like, he blamed... Maybe Vinny had to blame it on someone. Couldn't blame it on the psychopath that got shot on stage as well. Thank you. Shout out to that cop that ran up there and fucking took that guy out. But um, he had to blame it on someone, I guess. And he just did that to Phil. And that's so sad because Phil does not deserve that. Phil was a fuck up. Phil was a drug addict. Phil was an alcoholic. But so was everyone in that fucking band. And for them to point a finger in a drunken stupor out of years of just foggy touring and every night probably ending up feeling like the night before. Yeah. To hold on to a grudge like that to his grave, that's fucked up. They never even got to settle that shit. Yeah, that's what's fucked up. And fucking that's- Vinny Paul died at 50-something, and it's like, what? How? Yeah, <laughs> like, they were never what? able to squash any beef. That right there, you know, this whole, like, will it's Pantera ever sad, man. get together with Carrie King on guitar or Zach Wilde on guitar? Oh, there's like, been so many fun So many of those rumors yeah. and stuff. And, like, I mean, that's kind of... We'll get Gene Hoogland on drums. The, the, the closest thing we had or, was, like, a year or so ago. It, ju- it literally just happened where it was uh, Phil on stage with a Pantera band playing, like, old Rex was hits. there, right? I don't know if Rex was there. Mm-hmm. But it was, like... It was pretty much like the illegals or super joint or whoever the fuck. Just covering Pantera yeah. songs. Pan- and, covering songs. Yeah. They had two guitar players, so it like I think worked out, you know, as far as the sound, you know what I mean? I would but, I would definitely go and see that if Phil came here months from now and was like, I'm just doing Pantera cover songs. I'm I'm there. Yeah. So many people would be there. I know, a lot of people would do it. So I mean you don't I think that speaks again to like the people are really iconic, but also the the songs. The like, songs. The songs yes. are so iconic because yes. they like, and a lot of people talk shit about Pantera. You know, I mean, who? We, we have people Show in our them. in our band. Show. I'm not gonna, oh, you right. You know what I mean? There's people we. Mm, the, I see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wink, wink. Yeah. No, but I'm just, you know what I mean? There's people that'll like talk a little trash I'll on Pantera and stuff <laughs> where it's like, again, the songs are so iconic, and even as metal progresses and gets heavier and heavier, and we have Mashugo playing nine string guitars and throwing time signatures and out the bleed. ass, yeah. you know, or even you have people going crazy, technical animals as leaders and bullshit like that. You know what I mean? It still all comes back to this. Even like today's virtuoso players or technical players all revert back to like old metal. And stuff that's come before it, and Dimebag, and no, no, and Vinny too, like in their own ways, are like staples in their sound and just like guitar. Yeah, you know what I mean, like they're clap. on the the timeline of metal. Like there was bands to be mentioned when metal started and where we're at now. There is fucking right there in the nineties. Staple it down, fucking Pantera. Yeah, Gah! they were with the biggest of them touring. The like, best of the them. best yeah. of them headlining putting out songs on the radio this album went gold play like and when he was alive in pantera like and Vinny too like the whole they were like looked at as like top players you know what i mean like everyone yeah. looked up to his sound everyone looked up to that what they're doing sound like now everyone has that fucking, everyone's uh yeah. dean tight guitar yeah, sound fucking, and everyone has those clicky drums and everyone's got that now because well, like, i was gonna say that fucking um that guitar well, not the only, theme. but the like, but, the, just you know. the sound too, yeah. where it's like people are, you know, mimicking that dime bag sound. I mean, people are trying to get those. And it's a kind of a simplified sound, right? If it's, I'm not wrong. It's like the opposite of what guitar. It's like cut all the mids, only treble and bass. And then, you know what I mean? That's like his sound where it's like, it's, it's really just like 
it's cut a lot of like the mids out, so it's real sharp sounding. Mm. It's real tinny, you know, yeah. to that it's real high indie. It's not a lot of like in the middle presence, but which is like the opposite of guitar because the guitar is a mid range instrument, so it's supposed to be there. So it's part of like their sound. What type of a uh, was he a Marshall player? <laughs> Well, oh that, no, that's the thing. he like Randall. played Randall's. Mm, I remember now. And he was like bass speaker with a guitar head or I don't know if he a ran guitar bass. speaker. I think he ran regular Randall everything. He was like an endorsee of But Randall. how that Randall amp worked, it was kind of like a crossbreed of a bass amp and a guitar amp, right? I'm not sure. If I'm not wrong. I think he just had a lot of he, he lot of used the, like a lot of resonance because it definitely was a thick guitar bottom end. Yeah. But it and it had a really like sharp high end. There just wasn't a lot of middle. That's why those albums kind of sound like that. Like they're just not, mm. there's not a lot of like there. Yeah. It's a little hollow at times. Hollow, yeah. but. Insanely heavy all the way around, but in the middle it's missing a yeah. little depth in like some ways. And that's like on purpose. That's like, that's the sound. Um, so you get reinventing, which probably adds a little bit more. Thick, yeah. Adding, a little bit putting more. Putting that back in there. So. There's that, um, but then all, yeah, he has Randall guitar amps up until a certain point. Then he starts playing, um, uh, what is they Warheads or something like that. And then he goes and he gets, um, he starts getting his own endorsed stuff after Randall. He has his own amplification system, Crank amps. Have you ever seen those Crankenstein? They were nope. so short lived. They were well, his his brand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I he had did. his own brand of amps. And then, of course, that's where that left off. But uh, guitars played. Uh, oh man, that would have been a uh, great fucking line nowadays, yeah. dude. There have been so Crank, many bands. Though, if you can it. find those, I mean, if uh, you can find all those, no. those are like, because it got to a point where he started using tube amps. That's why he got away from the solid state. That was that sound too. That like no tube, just solid state mids cut. Yeah, your face, sharp, dude. sharp it's guitar. Fucking- then he started getting tube sound, gets a little bit more warmer, thicker guitar sound. Um, and that's kind of like where it ended off with his sound. And, and the uh, iconic dive bomb. Wow. Oh, no yeah, one he's used. master of the dime, of the whammy bar, the whammy pedal. He is, uh, dude, there, he, I know you can't say like he created this, but it's, he created his, his dive. Excuse like, me. dude, that dive, dude. And just to see how that guitar works, because you have one of these models, man, this, those strings just become flopped, dude. Just fucking loop. Yeah. And uh, I always think of like, uh, fuck it, now I can't think of the song, but like off of Boker Display, um, the first song, whatever, uh, I guess the song Boker Display of Power. But mm. just that, that dive bomb sound coming into it, it's just like how 101 starts too. It just fucking builds right up into it, and it's it's the coolest thing on earth. And then yours came with like pre uh, electrical tape, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah, that was the other thing. But like, just tape down it so it, the strings didn't get caught in the pickups yeah. when you dive bomb that hard on. That's it, what dude. he the did. The whole fucking bridge picked up on that thing. It's insane. If no one's seen it done yeah. or you heard that sound, dude, it's that was a trick he did was put the tape over the. The pickup on the edges of the first pickup, your bridge pickup, or I mean neck pickup, so that way when you dive bomb, the strings get all floppy. They don't get stuck under it and pop up. And sometimes they'll even get caught under your fret wire if you don't if they're not flush. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I've seen all kinds of weird things just because the strings get all floppy. You gotta really back. control that it's, thing. Or yeah. it's coming back all fucked up. But also up. he had that weird squeal that he would do where it was like a certain he would bend, he would loosen the strings really quickly and then bring them back to tighten but as he was tightening them he would hit like a pinch harmonic with his uh left hand like touch a string ever so slightly as it's tightening and as the tension's getting tighter and his finger is resting on the string it's creating this it gets that real high dude i harmonic. know exactly what you're talking yeah, about i'm so thinking he, about it right now and yeah. that breakdown with the cowbell dude yeah, so he like gets this really like this the dime squeal or whatever you know that iconic dime squeal and that's the technique he's using and he kind of you know i don't want to say invented it but he but, definitely like yeah made it his and kind of iconic in the pantera sound and his sound yeah you know inventing their own sound i would say yeah couldn't invent like uh their own guitar note no. you know or the actual 
ability to dive bomb. Yeah. But they had a sound, and to learn how to control dive bombing like that is insane. Dude, he he it's was in- so good. He could he so knew, good. Yeah, he knew where all the notes were on the fretboard, so he could hit those squeals at any note. So it's not like yeah, it's not random or in a sense like he could do it for the end of this song. This song ends in the key of A. Well, I know where A is on it, and so I can do all this crazy shit. Oh, this one's in D. I can do a D. I know where that is. So he knew where it was all over. So not only could he just do it, he was really really good at it. Yeah. So that's where it's like. And then, man, they they both grew up like before we like in this episode, uh, we never even got to like some of those things that maybe of, people like, don't know. Yeah. Or it's like, um, you know, um, him winning that guitar competition, Dimebag yeah. Daryl, when he was 15, 16. Yeah. And he, it's that lightning well, of that Dean. And I that's think, where he becomes his signature looking guitar as well, a little modified at times, I, I believe. But him winning that from the yeah. guitar competition. This, right. this year uh, will mark the 30th anniversary of Cowboys from Hell. So mm-hmm. in July. So I think we're going to talk about that album. So we will definitely be going more into like the beginnings of Pantera. Okay, like, well, I'll save some Pantera yeah, magic then. I'll thir- save some metal magic. 30th for it. anniversary Cowboys. I mean, that's one to definitely look forward to. Can't believe they had these. It's like we're getting to this point of time in history where it's like we're getting. These iconic bands are reaching their thirtieth, twenty fifth anniversary. Yeah, for like albums, you're like, oh and you're God. realizing how old <laughs> exactly. some of these people are, kind exactly. of now. Where you're looking at someone like uh, even actors, where you're like, how the fuck are you run around playing a superhero at fifty years old, yeah. right? You're fifty, and you're Ant Man. You're fifty. In some ways, I can't even believe this you're is fifty five, and you're shredding like that on stage still. Yeah. Uh, we learned, wow. From just learning a little history of like uh, Iron Maiden, that like, if you don't take care of yourself, like, sooner or later, Rolling you are Stones. not going to be able to perform these I songs mean, ever again. Yeah. I mean, for God's I mean, sakes, the guitar player's hand seizing up in, in Iron Maiden. They can't even move their hands anymore. Yeah. Fucking, what's a, a, you know, goddamn Neil Pert elbow tonight is hurt so fucking bad. It's just like some of that's like your style and what you do and you push yourself to the edge, but uh, you need to work out. If if Pantera is still around today, if, if Vinny and Paul were still alive or if Vinny and Dime were still alive, like they would need to cut it off with all that drinking, start working out so you can play <laughs> these long fucking shows of an hour and 30 minutes when you're in your 50s. You're not going to be able to do that party that hard anymore and just bounce back like that the next morning. It's you got to like get a personal fucking trainer to go out there and play these shows. Also, I think yeah, the by this point this album, the ninth album, they're kind of like done with like that. You know what I mean? Like how many tours have we been on? For just, how many albums have we been done? You on know what? Tour for 20 years prior. Phil you know? can barely make it to the stage tonight. Okay, well, fucking goddamn it. We're yeah, gonna, they're we're going to get you themselves know, to the edge of like We're death. we're yeah. able to play and make it. But even know. at times I've seen some videos of Dimebag just kind of like ooh you know, well, those are like I think the alcoholic. I was gonna say I think those are the, like the wasted <laughs> years where it's like him just like early, sweating the early yeah. years where you kind of like burn out on that quickly if you want to like keep touring. You like okay, it's and either you can't keep drinking like that. Every yeah, night. you can't. I can't do two hundred shows a year drinking every yeah. show. <laughs> you need to like have a fucking yeah. balanced diet. A Ab- fucking exercise regimen after year two or three of that water. you're like you know what yes. i'm just gonna Plenty start of sleep. It, it starts also to probably become like the regiment and the norm so it's like you play the show your reg regular thing is you just go and you drink after so it's I like know that's how i would be, you know what i mean yeah, it's like me that's just what so i do I so then you do that 200 try times not to drink so much night after night it's like, yeah, I'm going to probably drink every night after the gig. Yeah. But and get into that level where they had like a green room and they were like only the brown that's what I'm M&Ms, saying. You know? Especially when you get to that status, status two where it's like you have 30 minutes or to an hour before the gig of just sitting in the green room rehearsing, getting warmed up, and there's a whole fucking cooler full of whatever you want, mm. table full of whatever you want. You know, I mean, I, I've seen some writers for – local venues here and it's gotten pretty crazy so i can only imagine it's just it's only to see if you're actually reading it like they didn't want any of that food like in some ways in some ways they do but but in some ways they're trying to make sure you do you're reading the fine print yeah to see it's like uh, but i've seen yeah crazy stuff where it's like 
I want fine, you know, meats for a sandwich, meat and cheese plate. I want this. I, I don't want, want no bread, just meat yeah. and cheese. I want to roll I them up, put nuts. them in my mouth. I want to make order. my own sandwich in my mouth. <laughs> I want this wa- red wine. You know, I want like oh yeah, um, certain things you know, like that. Bria, like, yeah. uh, shout out to Bria Bill. Um, working at Total Wine, should we get some of those orders in for you know uh, venues or whatever? Or, uh, yeah. yeah, the green room for mm-hmm. like Robert Plant. You know, it's like two grand. Oh my god. And uh, welcome to the dog park. The dog pound. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to end it on this right here since we got a dog running around being crazy. Shout out to Charlie. Shout out to Jack. Uh, thanks for everyone. If you were watching the live stream, uh, please follow us on Instagram at Bangover Productions, uh, YouTube at Bangover Productions, and Facebook at Bangover ATX. Mm-hmm. We'll try and, and maybe then, stream some more if... Yeah. if I mean, we, Spotify. Well, all yeah, the we'll, where are you listen to us on? We'll get it some more. We also uh, got a hell of a schedule coming out. So I mean, yeah, we should be pumping out episodes yeah. um, by the dozens, uh, based on us still being a little bit on the quarantine and mm-hmm. split the lockdown almost. Yeah, band we just uh, worked with put out one of the singles that we helped out with, "The Wrath." It's going pretty yeah. well. As far as like bang over produced, yeah. So we, and, uh, we helped out with them. Chris Myers over here, excellent. Go fucking check engineer. that out. Um, anything else we got? We got a uh, um, got a Gojira episode. Oh man, we just we're, did. We're so many episodes. So um, we got. Uh, wonder if we're on fifty. I need to go and count. Oh, we're probably way past that. Probably. Oh my god, for real. Uh, oh. Probably. Where, where does Inclu- all the including, episodes including go? Including interviews and album stuff. Yeah, we're probably way past that. Yes, let us know um, what you guys would like us to hear or, or to what you would want to hear from us, maybe. You know, our, our thing is the mm-hmm. anniversary, but we have a list of mm-hmm. albums each month, uh, every month. They're and we have to pick yeah. four, three, mm-hmm. depending on schedule. Now we're probably picking six because of lockdown. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going through and finding a lot of like these anniversaries, the... 30th, 25th, 40th. We're finally, even. well, and it's so 2020, it's like, so that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's a yeah. round year, so it's nice. Mm-hmm. So, well, right. um, everyone stay safe out there. Um, and if you're feeling a little just uh, under the weather, just well, I'd say like claustrophobic or oh. just a little <laughs> like you're just stuck in the house and you just need to get out and you just can't take anymore, just think like this is kind of like a uh, summer vacation when you were a kid, you know. Think about it, like mm. when you were like 13, 14, couldn't get a job, summer vacation, you know? What'd you do? I stayed up all night and watched all kinds movies, of yeah, movies, played games. Ate junk food yeah, every ate, single yeah. night and too much video games. Yeah. So yeah. just relax and um, put on some fucking metal. That'll make yeah. you forget about all this shit. Listen, put on some Pantera. Listen to Pantera. Yeah, there you go. Listen to yeah. some Pantera. They'll tell you uh, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday doesn't mean, mean shit. There you go, right there. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. What are we ending it on? Outcast a shadow. I think. Uh, That's dude, a, I yeah, like that. You know, such a good song. Such a good song. Uh, I can't believe it's the end of it's the, the album. Ends the album. Yeah, well. I mean, I think that was the time where albums like you got to start strong and you got to end strong. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and this definitely does that. Uh, thank you all for listening, for sure. and please look for future episodes. Uh, Cannibal Corpse Kill. We got a lot We're so yeah. fucking There's metal. Extended. So uh, much. April's gonna be big. Team. So. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Let's do it. Bye. Uh.